What's going on, nerds? My name is Jesse, and we are back on Nerds Rise for another episode of Underrated. Today, we're doing one of my favorite movies of the last five or six years, and that is The Martian. Let me pull up the uh, picture here for you. Boom, there we go. This movie came out in 2015, directed by Ridley Scott, based on the Andy Weir novel, The Martian. You should definitely go read that book. It is a short book, easy to go through. The audio book is incredible. Heavily recommend that. If you like the movie and you're looking for a little bit more, definitely go read the book. There's a, The whole back half of the movie is cut out from the book, and the book is incredible. So go give it a read, please. All right. <clears throat> Today's episode underrated is on The Martian, definitely one of my favorite films of the last five years. Like I said, it stars Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, Benedict Wong, Chiwetel Ejiofor. I think I got his name right that time. I say his name all the time, never get it right. Love him as an actor. Um, Childish Gambino. Um, God, there's so many good people in this film, man. Love it. If you're looking for my score, I give it a 9 out of 10. Um, I definitely think it's underseen, but definitely not underrated. I think, uh, let's see, what do we got here on IMDb? IMDb has an 8 out of 10. That's pretty good. I think my rating's a little bit higher because I just really enjoyed the book and was looking forward to this film. <clears throat> a couple of, couple of pros, a couple of cons like we do on underrated. Uh, definitely going to be spoiler free, as always. God, my hair is in my face. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Number one pro. The CGI, the world building is incredible in this film. I feel like we're on Mars. I feel like we're in space. I feel like the Hermes is the Hermes. There's so many things in this film that are from the book that just feel real. I mean, the way that these, the way the film is set is it's a near future event. So basically we have most of this technology already, which is really exciting. I think it makes the film feel grounded it feels it feels real you know so many things so much of the technology is from our era you know it's not that far in the future a lot of this stuff exists right now which is exciting i think the spacesuits, especially the way that they're like a slim fit you can see the one that mark watney wearing here um it's like this slim fit design here it just all feels like real you know like it just feels a step up from what we've seen before when we're on Mars, when we're in the um, the hab, all that stuff just feels really good. The CGI, the world, the world building, all of the elements are just there, and I really like that. Number two pro is Mark Watney, the character played by Matt Damon. It's just incredible. I mean, he just he's straight out of the book. He's exactly like that in the book, and Matt Damon plays him so good, it's incredible. I just really, really like that portrayal. He was my favorite character in the book, and you have to like him because he's on screen the whole movie, right? I mean, yeah, we flash back to NASA, we flash back to Hermes occasionally, but he has to carry this film, and his wit and the way he deals with this is incredible. I have no cons for this film today. I, the only con I ever hear is that it's cast away in space, and I absolutely disagree with that because the characters are so different and the things that they deal with are so different. I mean, Castaway, we're, we're, we're with Tom Hanks. He doesn't speak very much. He doesn't have any background in survival. In this film, we're with Matt Damon. He's Mark Wal... Uh, <laughs> not Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> he uh, has all the skills necessary to survive. He's a farmer. Um, he's a mechanical engineer. He can fix anything that breaks. He is extremely smart, extremely sharp, and he knows what he has to do to survive on this planet. So, I feel like that comparison is invalid, personally, to me. So, what happens in this film? Okay, so Mark Watney stranded on Mars. He is, <clears throat> he has to survive. He has only enough supplies to survive for 30 days. And that's my next pro. The survival in this film is just extremely fun, and having the uh, video logs and having him being able to expose it via the logs is just very clever, and I think that kind of stuff helps you along in the film. It lets you know what he's doing. We have to create the water. We have to plant the potatoes. We have to do the um, rover mods. All that stuff is just really fun, and I think some of the montages in this film are just really good. And that brings me to my next pro, which is the music in this film. In the book, one of the big points in the book is that 
Mark hates disco. And there's a lot of disco in this uh, score, right? And that's kind of a nod back to the book. And I think that just kind of brings the movie along. You know, there's so many things that happen in this film. And this just brought along with the music. And that's just a big fun part about the film. My next big pro, and this is going to be my last pro here, and I really want you guys to see this movie for yourself if you haven't seen it because it's incredible, is the uh, last act of this film here, the final third of the movie. Uh, as we're traveling in the rover, keeping us spoiler free here to the next spot we need to get to and doing all the mods necessary to the ship to get up into the, uh, orbit to get to the Hermes is just really exciting. It's really fun. Um, a lot of the book, if you're a book reader, a lot of that book's been cut out. You should definitely go read it. It's really good. Um, but getting from Mars to Hermes is just really exciting. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of risk. There's a lot of problem solving. And there's a lot of problem solving in the film together because Mark Watney gets all kinds of problems that he has to deal with. You know, he's in Hab Design for, to last 30 days. He's got to last a year and a half, right? That kind of stuff is always just really exciting to me, and it really keeps me on the edge of my seat. There's a lot of rewatchability in this film, especially. Um, I rewatch this film a couple times a year, easily. I've read the book over 15 times because I like to listen to audiobooks at work, and when I'm at, whenever I'm in a reading slump, I throw that in my ears and I work to that because it's just very, very good. I mean, endlessly rereadable, endlessly rewatchable for me. If you like this film, please let me know. Um, I put an audio track underneath this one to kind of spice it up here. If you like that, let me know. If you don't want to see it, let me know. I'll take it off. Um, I just kind of want to spice it up here a little bit. And sorry for the late upload um, because I've just been really busy at work. But we're going to keep going. I'm going to do a Reddit Fan Theories episode again today. So you got a double upload from me today. A double upload from Scarce Boys. <laughs> if you like this stuff, please let me know because I do really like doing the underrated series. If you have any recommendations you want to see me review, Please let me know down in the comments. Follow all of the Nerds Rise crew on Twitter and our, our Facebook page as well. We're still looking for admins. Um, you know, message us on the back end of the channel. And yeah, guys, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Later.